Hello, I'm Dr Mike Perring. I'm a plant scientist and ecologist based at the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology in Bangor, North Wales. Here, I am going to explore the impacts ground level ozone pollution has on agriculture, including tropical crop plants. Why? Because ozone poses a threat to food security. Farmers, smallholders, crop scientists, government departments and other stakeholders need a management agenda for ozone. You may well have heard of ozone. Indeed, you might think it's a good thing if you've heard about the ozone layer. After all, we need ozone high in the atmosphere. Up there, it protects humans and other organisms, down here, from the harmful effects of the sun's rays. Yet there is a downside to ozone, and that downside occurs at ground level. Ozone at the ground surface can contribute to climate change. It has harmful effects on human health and materials, and it damages vegetation. Later, we will explore the what and why of this damage for crops. But first, a quick introduction to ground level ozone itself. Ozone at ground level can be natural. It forms from other molecules known as precursors when they react with sunlight. Soils, vegetation and fire emit precursors. Precursors include nitrogen oxides, NOx, and volatile organic compounds, VOCs. Industrial processes, electricity generation and transport produce these same compounds. Ozone concentrations at the ground surface have thus been growing since the Industrial Revolution. Increased concentrations are not the same everywhere. Industrial development occurs at an uneven pace across the globe. Africa and Asia will have more damaging ozone concentrations in the coming decades. Although industrial and urban centres produce precursors, they are not most at risk from ground level ozone pollution. Agricultural areas downwind of pollutant centres are particularly at risk. This is because ozone has had time to form from the precursor molecules as they react with sunlight. This is especially marked when high temperatures and high pressure coincide with the precursor molecules. Yet, few farmers and smallholders are aware of ozone's effects. Ozone is a hidden threat to agriculture. In general, we can't see it, hear it, smell it or taste it, and we don't realise it's the problem until it is too late. So how does ozone cause crop damage? Gases get taken in at the leaf through open pores. Scientists call these pores stomata. In crop plants, stomata are open during the day to allow gas exchange for photosynthesis. Here you can see carbon dioxide, oxygen and water vapour being exchanged. Unfortunately, being open lets other gases in. This includes ozone. When ozone gets into the leaf, it forms other damaging molecules. These are reactive oxidant species, ROS. Together with ozone, ROS can cause outright cell death. Even without death, ozone impairs the function of cells, their metabolism. This leads to physiological effects on the plants, such as reduced photosynthesis. When a lot of ozone enters the leaf, visible injury happens. This is due to ozone overwhelming cell defences. Crops vary in their sensitivity to ozone. As you can see here, beans are particularly susceptible. The stippling and flecking is very characteristic of visible ozone injury. Note the still visible veins. Here you can also see how wheat is damaged parallel to the leaf axis. In this picture, we see some damage to aubergine as well. Visible injury is particularly bad when the plant's appearance determines whether it can be sold at market. Lettuce and spinach have had their value compromised by visible injury due to ozone. And here you can see how high ozone conditions, together with poorly timed irrigation, damaged the chicory crop. The unirrigated crop below was not damaged by ozone. It is important not to get confused as to the cause of visible leaf injury. For instance, Mites can also cause stippling. However, mites form webs on the underside of the leaf or where leaves join the stem. It is not always easy to see mites, but if you put paper under the leaf and tap the leaf, specks will appear on the paper, which are the mites falling off. These specks, as well as the telltale webs, would be absent with ozone injury. Ozone can also cause a general stress response. 
You can see this here with the reddening of the leaves in a wild plant from European grasslands. In controlled conditions, such as the solar domes in Bangor, we can state that the stress is due to ozone. This is because plants grown in otherwise similar conditions, but without high ozone, do not show such a stress response. However, in the field, it is far harder to determine the correct cause. It does though pay for the farmer to inspect the damage carefully. If you decide the damage is due to a pest, you may spray costly pesticide, but this will be wasted investments if the damage was actually caused by ozone. Ozone doesn't just cause damage to crop yield through visible injury. Damaged cells can't function as intended. This impairs the uptake of carbon. Ozone also appears to speed up leaf aging. Scientists call this accelerated senescence. Here you can see two plants in a high and a low ozone atmosphere where the farmer wants to harvest below ground. Although they appear to grow the same at first, differences become apparent. Eventually there are fewer leaves on the ozone affected plants. You can also see signs of the accelerated senescence. To compensate for lack of carbon fixation in the leaves, translocation occurs. This means carbon is moved from the roots. This then impacts yield. You can see this by comparing the root systems on the two plants. Translocation also has indirect outcomes. Under high heat, drought or nutrient stress, more limited root systems under ozone may cause the plant to die. This will lead to the failure of the harvest. Compare this to the plant in the low ozone that is resilient to these other stresses. All these consequences of ozone mean that crop yield is negatively affected. We can see this for sweet potato here. On the right is the plant that has been grown under high ozone, and you can see far fewer leaves and accelerated senescence. In the graph below, you can see this leads to very low yield in the high ozone conditions. We can also see this for wheat. The ear on the right has been grown in high ozone conditions. There is reduced grain filling, as well as fewer grains. Globally, ozone has been estimated to reduce soybean yield by 12.4%, while wheat yield has been reduced by 7.7%. Total production losses can be much higher in developing countries. Regions most at risk of crop yield loss from ozone are also affected by other stresses. This is a double, triple, or even quadruple whammy for some areas, such as Sub-Saharan Africa. Stresses include pests and diseases, heat, drought, and nutrient limitation. We started this video saying humanity needs a management agenda for ozone. This can be two-pronged. First, over the long term, we need to change industrial processes to reduce the emissions of ozone precursors. This will help fight climate change and improve human health and wealth. It will also help lessen crop damage. In the near term, farmers and crop scientists can also manage ozone. Farmers can choose to plant different species and varieties that are less susceptible to ozone damage. Crop scientists and farmers can co-develop improved crop varieties. These choices and varieties need to address many threats, not just ozone, but also pests and diseases, drought, heat stress and nutrient limitation. Another way farmers can help address ozone damage is through careful irrigation. Poorly timed irrigation can lead to taking up of ozone from the stomata. This will impair crop yield as discussed earlier. Irrigation needs to avoid ozone episodes. These episodes are most likely when high pressure coincides with high levels of ozone precursors, sunlight and heat. Improved local scale weather forecasting can help implement intelligent irrigation. Together, we can address the challenge to food security that is ground level ozone pollution. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us.